One day, I think it was in the afternoon, and my mom came back from school, and she said, did you hear so-and-so had actually committed suicide? <laughs> Every time she sang that song, I would envision my funeral, and um, I would see people hanging, men, women, children, having committed suicide. So you tried to take your own life? She said, please, the next time you want to commit suicide, do it at your place. Hello, everybody, and welcome to St. Twins TV right here on YouTube with myself, Innocent, and my sister, Millicent Marshile. It's another exciting episode. It's another beautiful story. And I know for sure that you will interact with us in the comment section below. Like Millicent says, let's meet in the street of the comments and let us know what you think of this particular story. Yes. And if you're listening on Spotify, what's up? Hit us with a like there and make sure to share the link. Also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Podcast. We love and appreciate you. Let's grow the numbers. Let's share the stories. I mean, you know, we're all about impact, yeah. um, changing lives. And we always have the most amazing guests who are so generous with their stories and are also just out here to create impact. And the most amazing audience, too, who watch, subscribe, and like. Let's speak to Rantu. Thank you so much for being here and welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to give you an opportunity to sort of share your story because she's a unique guest because I had a conversation with her and like she's a great narrator. <laughs> so we won't, tr we will try not to interrupt her. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and go straight into your story. Great stuff. Um, good afternoon, viewers. Okay, it is an afternoon. <laughs> I'm Leta Ranto. Actually, Leta is the name. Ranto oh, is my father's surname. Okay. I think when you do I these things, the, I as named the other, other way around. you're not yes. the only person because uh, I think I started with the surname and okay. the name Herbert King, Rika. Oh, yes, so when, yes, I, when okay. you get my number, and then when I run to let down, you're thinking run to is actually the uh -huh, name. Yes. But as a female, you should know Ra means male, right? Ra -e, ra -e. Yeah, so it's run to let down, but run to is the same name, it's let down run to, to put it in the, the, okay. the, the correct sequence. Awesome. Yes, so um, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I've been trying so much to get hold of you. I tried to comment, like, guys, how do I get a hold of you? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, one of, I'm one of the subscribers as well. Oh, I, I would watch you. stories and I'm like, goodness, how did these people get here? Maybe it's because I'm in Limpopo. I'm not given an opportunity because I'm fine the Bundes. Um, I'm a 39-year-old mother, a grandmother to a two great guy uh, named Hossi Puno. And uh, I'm a mother to two, uh, 19 and 11, is a girl and a boy. I'm not married at the moment. I'm from Limpopo. I grew up in a very dusty village called Mamone, Kasukukune, in the Jane, Jane Fest area. I don't know if you know that place, but that's where I'm coming from. Okay. So I, I, I just want to tap a bit on my, on my childhood. The type of, I had a beautiful upbringing. It was quite indigenous. Yeah. My mom was not there because of college. My dad was probably here in Joba, castling, and I was. Well, born and bred there, taken care of by my paternal grandmother. We were best of buddies. Mm -hmm. And I had beautiful aunts, about six of them. From time to time, they would go. Some would come to the city, some be um, back at home in, in Limpopo. So I grew up a head girl because my grandmother, I think, had 13 goats and one, two cows. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and I would be barefoot most of the time. It was a very bubbly child, very, very smart, I know and I remember because I'd ask most difficult questions. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and, but there's, there's, there's one part of my story that I may not be able to put down here because it's quite lengthy. Mm. But that is my first struggle of being me. And I didn't understand why me, but well, it happened at a very early age, I think it was, I was four, so I'm not going to state it here. But at the age of 10, my second real struggle was quite spiritual and psychological. There was a boy that I may not be able to mention his name, God bless his soul, that was very close to me because we went to the same school. I was 10, that was in 1994. No, we didn't go to the same school. We went to the same church. Mm. Uh, he went to the other school. He used to sell uh, your candies. Um, so I loved the ones we called fireballs. 
the blue mm. ones. So because everybody's lips would be red and right. mine would be red. I know, right? I know. And this boy was very calm, quiet, reserved, lonely. He just oozed this aura that I'm not okay. But I just loved something about him. He gave me blue candies. And him giving me blue candies, I didn't have the money to buy every day. Then I would make a colo tisha. Please, mm. I'll give you tomorrow. And he'll give me like, hey, you were not told. The next day, please, I'll give you tomorrow. I never gave him tomorrow. And then I was just browsing through my aunt's broken treasure. You know those broken earrings? Mm. It's a watch, but it's broken stuff. Then I found a watch and I said, I'm going to give this to him as a collateral. Then we'll see. He'll hold on to this. When I have the money, I'll pay him. I gave, gave the boy that watch. And then we continued with Ngolo Tisha, I'll pay you, I don't pay, and all of that. Uh, he was he had this bike bicycle. One day, I think it was in the afternoon, I think that was the beginning of my real me feeling real brokenness and detachment from being a child. One day, I think it was in the afternoon, and my mom came back from school and she said, Did you hear so and so had actually committed suicide? It's like, what is suicide? And she explained how he took a rope and hanged himself. I was like, sure. why, why, how? And my mom tried to explain how they don't know, but then between the ground or the surface and his body, there was no suspense. He was, his legs had landed on the ground, but there was a rope on his neck, mm -hmm. and but he had died. Doesn't make sense to you, I think, because mm. you know that if a person had hanged themselves, there should be suspense between the mm. ground and the body, but, yeah. which, they which should now, literally be hanging. They should be hanging, literally be hanging mm. to the suffocation, mm. the strangulation, whatever. And I don't know what happened to me, but I just got struck by the emotion that he went through before that, mm. and I stayed with that mm. because. I didn't, it didn't make sense. Him, I saw him just this afternoon. He gave me a fireball sweet this afternoon. Even now, my lips are still blue. I just spoke with him. Mm. I asked my mom, did somebody do that to him? I think he was 12, I was 10. Oh. And my mom said, no, it, I, we don't know. It's apparently, it, it's suicide. He took his life. Because I can imagine if you didn't even know what suicide is, exactly. you'd assume he probably doesn't even know what suicide what is. Yeah. Like, How, almost the same child. age. we both kids. And, but the, the weird thing about that encounter was how I was left mm. with the misery and the sorrow mm. of how he could have probably felt before he decided that. Mm. And I stayed with that. I thought I'd wake up the following morning and it would be a distant memory. Okay, a friend of mine that used to give me candy went and did this and now he's no longer there. No, I stayed with that. It stayed with me. And now it took me about a month and I think two weeks to get rid of that emotion. But instead of getting rid of that emotion, that emotion transitioned into me feeling like that, as in I'm the one that's supposed yeah. to do what he did. So mm. it's only later when I found out that was called intrusive thoughts, this unpleasant thoughts mm. that you can't get rid of and you do not know how to really literally get rid of those thoughts. Mm. So I became really, really suicidal at the age of 10. And that was not something, it, it felt like I was not now allowed to talk about it. I could not talk about it. Those that were around me could not see Hori. There's something wrong, Galetaho. She has changed. Mm. I used to be the Brenda Fancy of my village. Mm. I used to be this, because I'm, I'm a musician as well. Mm. I loved singing and ascending the stage, though I'm a bad dancer. I didn't <laughs> care. I had to, when they say, well, no, you are the mother, you are the father, you know, yes. now I must be the entertainer. The are we going to have the, the festival, <laughs> yes. though? So, like, yeah, we're going to have the festival. It's like, yes, you know who's your girl. Come on. But now, now that died with him. And I was now no longer that bubbly girl, mm. that bubbly persona, but nobody seemed to notice. Then I remember thinking to myself, why should I kill myself? Well, okay, he killed himself. I, 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 I stayed with the aura or the feeling or the emotion of why he, he, I found out that he didn't know why he did it as well. If you, cause most people that commit suicide, they had issues, they had reasons why they could not continue with life. But then realized, no, there is, I felt like there was no reason to him having to decide why he should take his life. And he just felt bad and sad and miserable. 
and depressed and dead and cold and distant and life meant nothing anymore for no apparent reason. I felt like that as well. So I continued with that journey and I remember when we went for, my mom is a prayer for woman, we go to church, we were born again and stuff. When we went for the conference, you know our Easter rallies, mm -hmm. then each time they called people, go Bailey, married couples come for an altar call, let's pray for you, I'd go. I was trying so hard to get rid of this feeling mm. and it didn't want to go. When they called those that are looking for a job, please come. I would go you as go. well. <laughs> Desperately so. And, and I didn't talk to anybody about it. When they said uh, those that want a uh, God to heal, uh, those that are sick, I'd go. Mm. Until one lady recognized me and, and noticed that there's this child that keep on going to the front. Yes. And she eventually yes. thought I was going with my mom. Mm -mm. You know, but I was alone. She noticed like, no. When they ask for Baba Nyaka miracle, she goes. When they <laughs> ask she's for, so young. she's so young, she's ten, and she goes, and Even she doesn't for married look like couples, you she go. goes. And when <laughs> they say those that want God to bless them with marriages, oh. she goes. What's going mm. on with the child? I was so desperate to get to to get rid of this thing because mm -hmm. it felt like a very dark, heavy blanket yes. that I could not get rid of. It's called intrusive thoughts. It's um. I think it's associated with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh. So when people have those type of thoughts, they obsess about them. Like they sink in that they cannot get rid of them. It's, so actually, it's, it's, it's actually trauma. It's yeah. trauma. Her. It's trauma for her. But you stay mm. with that, it. Yes, but you, you stay with, with it. it. And you constantly you fight it. Mind. But it doesn't it's want to The more to you go. try to fight it, the more it comes more, more, more. And oh. now I, I, I remember thinking, hey, this thing, yeah, maybe it's not working. Let me get to my I don't know what you call them. Oh, okay. And then in, the, in our village, in our neighborhood, we had that. So every afternoon, 4 p.m., I'd go. I'd clap my hands, you know, so desperate thinking maybe because I can see this is a, a spiritual fraternity. Mm. Something about this aura maybe can take this thing away. Nothing happened still. I remember I was even promoted to being the one that hid on the drums. My mom mm. didn't know I was now being part and parcel of the whole dance and everything. But you're committed every day. I was day committed going. every day. And then when time comes, I was in Sunday school. I would go and sing as the, uh, the Sunday school uh, choir leader I would sing my heart out nothing happened and I remember there was now uh, th this woman that loved the song I hated that lady I'm sorry but every time she sang that song I would envision my funeral mm. and I would see okay, it's like the a song transition says, for you yes the, I would live in a moment where I see myself it's like getting a hymn. buried it's a hymn so you feel like it's my funeral my every funeral. time she sang it you don't even feel it you see it because I'm, I'm I'm quite Yo. a spiritual person mm. I have this thing of, of, of tabbing into a very spiritual realm and feeling things even now, I can walk mm. in a room and gauge it and feel this is what's going on. Mm. So, it, this woman loved that song. Goodness. <laughs> and it triggered. I would appeal barely say di la kamponi se 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 like it's a ma yeah. Holy fifi. And I would feel that. I remember one day I was trying to run out of church because mm. she was saying this. It was so emotional. You know how it is in the koma uh, haing. Mm. These old women kadi kubanya na this dark side is capsule. And I tried to run out because I wanted to go and cry like, God. And this one woman, I think she was an usher. She blocked me. She says, hey, where are you going? I wanted to bite her hands off, like, leave me alone. Then they thought I was actually manifesting or something. Yeah. The demon lads or something. But it was not really that. It was the fact that I just wanted to come out of the space because now church was becoming miserable for me. It's triggering, and yeah. It because was real. Sissy, it it was. It, it's real for her. It, it's real for me. And I'm 10. And I can't talk about it. Sure. And when you, you tap into what they call the law of attraction, you realize if you are miserable, you're going to attract more misery. So basically it means I'm being bullied at home, I'm being bullied at school, I'm being bullied in the church. I'm being bullied everywhere I go and I'm going through this thing as well that I cannot talk about. Then I remember talking to my grandmother then and saying, I want to go to the initiation school, go main. Um, don't talk, talk, tell my mom. Because my mom gives a lot and we don't do those things. Mm -hmm. I just want to run to this uh, initiation. So school. you can be away. So I can be away. I thought going there would actually take this thing off as well. Again, I tried church, it's not working, it's making it worse. I tried the initiate, uh, what do you call mm. it, whatever. I, span, I, 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 I tried everything, it's not working. And my grandmother said, it's okay, you can actually go. 
um, I won't I won't tell her. And so I was even experiencing nightmares. I would hear people talk under the pillow. So my childhood was just horrible. Now, he, she eventually told my mom that, look, she wants to run to initiation school and you'd think it's me because I'm this indigenous being in this family. So just block her. Do not allow her. She wants to run there. Just know that she wants to run there. And my mom uh, blocked the whole thing. She took me to her maternal, maternal mom. When they, this intrusive thoughts now developed into something new. Because now it's so that Anya got the hang. Because I could literally hear the voices. They would tell me, you need to do that. You need to do that. Then I, it now transformed into me wanting to throw myself into a speeding car. Because there it was now <sighs> in the urban Mm. And Yaronamo, there's an incomplete building where you see Maplanka Kodimu, where you can now, Barike um, Sokole, where you mm. can form that rope. There's nowhere. Now, so there's no of trees. other ways to kill yourself. Exactly. But I don't know why. So you're like, I'll jump in front of Except the car. a moving car. And I would be holding myself like this. Like, no, 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 I don't want to do this. And I would go home to my maternal grandma. She does, nobody knows what's going on. To cut the story short, for me to get over that, I remember my mom, my mom used to read a lot of books. She, so she came across this book where this satanic guy, I think it was an ex-satanist, said, um, if a person goes through an attack, a spiritual attack, especially those that don't pray about it, because if you pray about something, it, it, it leaves you immediately. But if you go through that for six months and you persist in you know, saying no to this thing. I can't do that. I can't do that. It actually takes you six months. After six months, we, we give up because we realize we actually failed. And then we leave you. We'll come back again. But six months, sure. it's, mm. it's, it's, it's our threshold mm. in terms of period. Or we have attacked this person, got this thing. This person doesn't want to give in. I yeah. mm. My mom said that to me. That's what freed me. I started counting. Yo. said, if my mom said six months, this thing you told me, like, must April. May, June, July, August, September, October. Now it's December. I almost get a little free. So I'm done. Then why? It means I'm done. Then that's, that's just how like it left. It's just... like, pfft. because sometimes knowledge frees you. Yes. When when the word says that the truth shall set you free. That's Immediately, how... you're like, this thing actually doesn't have power anymore. Da anymore. Just like that. And that's just how I believed. sat down with my mom and started to explain, Mama, I was going through one, two, three, four in school, looking outside the the, 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 the school uh, uh, classroom. I would see there were these long, tall trees in the. You know how schools would have these tall mm. trees, and um, I would see people hanging, men, women, children having committed suicide. So I was now hallucinating this thing. I would now see them with my mm. naked eyes, and Mama was like, "What? When?" Then I started to tell her the whole story. Mm. And she was really shocked. Then she said to she said to me, every day coming back from school because she was a teacher, mm. something compelled me, pushed me into a prayer closet, and said you must pray. But I didn't know. Okay, I must pray, but for what? Basically, yes, I must pray as my Christian walk. But why is it so strong that I, I shouldn't skip? I, I she said 1994 was my year of being this prayer holic, like I would pray I would pray and she'd pray for hours mm. so she said I didn't even know why and I said probably that was the case so my childhood now was like that but after that I realized something about me that I was a I was I, I was a very I realized that it was actually very strong because most things that happened to me afterwards, which I may not I mention because there's a whole lot of stuff happened, mm. I was able to just know that this is spiritual and I have to deal with it spiritually. Meaning I had to learn to pray from a very early age. Then I I don't know now because I have to now merge journeys. Because I care I'm mm. jumping certain yes, things. Yeah. Now I want to merge journeys so that now um, there was a, a, a situation this now, I think, is me talking to parents. But why do they must really be cautious when it comes to their responsibility? And not... But they accountable. Look at their budget. When I went to tertiary, I was taken to one of my aunts that stayed in the East Rand. Uh, you know, a paternal aunt. Sometimes you find that your khadis don't really like your mom, per se. Like, and now you, you are the midget or you are the minion of that person they don't really can't tolerate. 
So at some point, being there, I stayed with her. I loved her. I used to visit her from a very early age. I loved her so much, that woman. And it's because of how she would, you know, relate with uh, her childhood stories. I love storytellers. Mm. So she'd tell me, and all of this and all this. But one day it happened that this person just snapped out of nowhere. I don't remember what was the issue. I don't remember. I think I was 16 years old. My first year in tertiary, from Julia. I, I used to go to this church that would dress like that. Tuku, natural hair, no makeup. Mm. The way you see that CC people or Brandon people, sorry for mentioning names, mm. uh, but would dress like that. Full time, young or old. So I was still that girl, new in the city. I could say nothing about Joburg. And she mm. said in that small disagreement, I want you out of my house tomorrow morning. Oh, eh. And then in the following morning, out of shock, I was now, what's going on? I had to pack the little bags. I had, remember, I had 17.50 in my pocket. Then I had to pack and go. There was this boy that was asking me out. I was working at Fox Street for a security company. There was a bank security company. That's the only person I knew. Olore, I can go to help me get a place to stay. I don't know where to go basically don't know where to go and I can't call my dad my mom didn't even have a cell phone though a teacher but she still had this ancient way of doing things so I, I can't call my dad why I can't call my dad is because my dad when you had instead of saying why, why are you not looking why are you not looking be careful, be careful. Mm. so I knew he was not gonna really really Musa. At this, in the situation, he, he would ask, what did you do? And I didn't want that. So I went to that guy and said, this is what's happening at home. I don't have a place to stay. Kitty 16. Uh, my mom gets paid Kitty 22. I don't know where to go. And uh, I can't go home back in Limpopo. And that guy, remember consciously, I'm going to say consciously, because I did not explain my first story. Mm. But consciously, I'm a virgin. I haven't slept with a boy. I don't know how boys think. I'm from a church that was very conservative and reserved. That you don't know. The motto of the church was Mukete one side, the Mutese one side. So because of that, you don't know how men think. How men are, can be sometimes op uh, opportunistic. As a woman, you can go to a guy and say, help me, Kamaroba. I don't know about that. Mm. So the guy says to me, no, don't worry. I can help you with a place to sleep for tonight and tomorrow we'll take it from there. Mm. And I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. Razamai, we go to Soweto. He bought a pizza for the first time in my life. Give on a pizza. It's like, oh, the bread is round. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry it's about that. Flavor, sorry. It, it's got topping. Yeah. I can't see it. It's about mangola actually. Cheese and certain things. But for bread, no, I don't know this. Um, and then I'm there with that boy, vulnerable, dookie on, long skirt on, everything covered. I don't know anything about a man at that age. And the guy, I remember he bought a bottle of, I still hate that wine. It's called it's the Lapella. The, is it white or something? It's, it's a big bottle. Then he has it there and his friends come in and the and then we are there and I eat the round bread as well. This guy says he's going to help me, but remember, I don't even have budget. How is he going to help me? Mm. And you don't, as a child, you don't get to ask yourself that question. Because for me to get an accommodation, it means I must have money to pay my stene. I must have a bed. I must have deposit. Have, so you have no lot, furniture, yeah. you've I got no say, money, you've got no deposits. I have nothing and I still can't get, I can't call my dad. Because obviously if I call my dad, uh, it's, it's, it's good. My dad is one guy that is... Very overprotective, but in doing so, he executes that with so much aggression. And you understand, mm. he's 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 the disciplinarian. He's strict. He's strict. So you don't just call in the middle in of the, the middle month of the month and say, "Van mm. what have you done?" That is the first question. And obviously, when she he goes back to the lady, he would have she would have her own version of the story. But what I remember is that I was just so timid. I don't remember. So now we have the pizza, we have the drink. Nah, my drink was a tropica. Yeah, I remember a pineapple. Mm. And yeah, Jacques Anwa. 
Mara mo haraka bo shogo njeman ke thomo te tahlegela. I've never been drunk before. Growing up I was not allowed to go to on school trips because of the type of church we were going to. Le bana le this thing ya gore batho ke ba dira dibi. You don't mingle with 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 the akitse le ba bijang we gentiles or non go non unbelievers. So we were not allowed to go on, on on I was not allowed to go on school trips. I've, I don't know the taste of alcohol. Mara ne ke to gore ke atimela. And come you are drinking juice but now you are ke a tlaka tlaka ana wa ngushisha. I don't get it. What's going? Okay, then ke felletsa ke robetsi. But in the middle of the night, I wake up to a scene. What's going on? There's a person doing his routine. What is happening? And this person is there. And I try to find this person. I can't matter. And this person is going to go to the house. And after that, I remember falling asleep again and waking up to a very miserable scene. Now taking me back to when i felt i had lost myself for the first time mm. but now this one e rogola everything from the past and now put it back today to this day is this the guy that was supposed to help you this is the guy that took supposed advantage to help. Now. took advantage of that mm. and now i'm finding myself koso weto i don't have money to go back i get to rekutlo ya guy my body mm. is in a mess kwa bohloko everywhere and one of the things that i remember was how much i felt so empty like the some a like bigger version of you. my life is mm. missing something i had decided because we were taught and trained in every sermon the importance of waiting for the right time and this thing because now this ocd thing i was mm. so obsessed with i think then it messes you up because mm. you're like this thing that i've been holding on to, to for so long and it's gone but i overnight and i had nothing to do with that exactly you were not consulted you no. were not part of the decision no. but it's taken away exactly and you can't take it back it's stolen it's away stolen. from you no cause agree doesn't matter Gosh, who, who no consult that. and because we're not only that we're going to call it maybe ocd for it now also, yes it it's exaggerated even exaggerated. more in your head yeah we are like past traumas yes And oh. now the intrusive thoughts that I thought of when I was 10 now they come back with a reason. Remember when I was fighting off there was no reason behind why I wanted to do that. Now there is valid reason and it's understandable. Mm -hmm. And again I have no way out. The guy who took the fruit and um atla papa ra uniform abula batla do we are meroko ngren and then abula lebati and locked in the butler door and threw in the key. He acted normal like I'm his girlfriend. Like we had agreed. But nothing happened. Hey, like he, it's normal. Sure. Mm. And sad. then now um what happens is that after that give one that bottle there that I saw is is a rosa shetchinya and half and then they would proofen those pink tablets. I think I took about 16 of those at once. So and you I, tried to take your own life. Yes, I wanted morning. I wanted everything off because I was not going to continue because everything now was coming back flooding back mm. to me into like in one day and what also remember there's a current situation of like in Madulo and I was just being it's a lot. Uh, again for a 16 year old uh, one thing I wanted to hold on so much to was me being intact for for the right time and the right risk because I'd seen things happen. Um So now what happens is that I take medicine only. Get the proof and they were in a yellow pack. That time I think the police never such a look at a yellow packet. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. Plastic. And then I took them and I took that wine. And uh, I remember there was this burning sensation here. Like uh, something was boiling now. I don't know what happened. I think I passed out. The landlady was in the yard. I think Okule something. Because the landlady they have the key open out. and then i woke up get look go back to the hospital they asked questions i responded then they booked in a psychologist to come and see me and he she asked questions some i was not able to respond to and i responded to some of the questions and that lady said now we are here at a point where you are admitted and we want to know what led you to do this thing and explaining myself i think i didn't make much sense to that lady she said i want to speak to your mother and can i go i don't want my parents to know that i had attempted to commit suicide so now let us look at it this way from being in a home the previous day 
ne to being hospitalized the following day something i hadn't planned like my bad in early 15 i didn't think of that today kid is 16 ni kid is 17 everything changed in 24 hours everything changed in 24 hours now i'm hospitalized now i'm yo you are violated i'm violated i've lost everything and you, com- you tried to commit, to commit suicide. suicide and my parents still don't know and the lady that sent me off still doesn't care because i don't remember her calling me and say oh robeje guy because mm. remember i slept guy guy and it, when i got admitted in hospital for una guy obvious ishej now when the guy get back from work ba mujori it seems like the girl you had here last night tried to commit suicide he came to the hospital told the nurses no i'm the boyfriend uh na robeje ga ka and all of that and then and guess what he said to me she said please the next time you want to commit suicide do it at your place yes don't do it at my place because zo mqetela indawo yokuhlala he said that i was young everything is now come now i have to be released from hospital go back home with him where do you go yes pelale to the man who raped you kitla ya kai i don't want my parents to know the one person i'm worried about the most is my dad Again I get papa cats with this. My dad loves me so much and he's very but he's overprotective again. Akaba mpichar bwagai. Skatlosa eskolo. And the plan was not to go back home. No, so now you stayed with this man. I mean, what what happened? How long did you stay with him after I that? I stayed with him for two weeks. The first thing I had to do was to wash the blankets. There were at some point I think traces of blood uh because of what had happened there. And I remember him telling his friends I didn't know Zulu then but I remember this words ngizo khaba mabhodlela I I later understood to Romo Tonaro he's going to smash me because I'm still intact mm. when a person says ngizo khaba mabhodlela he planned it he he said that to his friends I remember those words I don't know why I held on to that So do you think you were drugged I think he put in either drugged or or, or a bit of alcohol in your, in your juice because remember my blood is that I, I didn't know anything about if if alcohol gets into your system most it will it's too concentrate so i stayed with him for about two weeks just the day before my mom got paid gafona gafona lap got a call back my dad called me and said can i please speak to mama guess what my aunt hadn't called my parents to say let the hoy is missing at least if she could lie and say she's missing i don't know where she is she hadn't said anything to my parents about Quiet. me not being there so your mom was shocked my mom was shocked when i told him mama this happened but i never mentioned the rape issue i just said no um brahadi and then meomo kai kai i said it was a woman from church when that was not true <laughs> and she now had to send me money i had to first wash the 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 blankets ke ma pele bana ke kotiza kotizing for my rapist ke ma pele and do all these things for him and now give myself up for that type of exploitation Remember when that happens you cannot go back to the cops and say I got violated. Mm. Um uh, that was the era where if you got violated they would first ask you boa peri where were you mm. how do you know that was the It's your era. fault it was your it fault was your yeah. fault you Things know have you changed remember. now but Things have changed now it's better now but then that was 2002 they would ask you how why we are wrong when a why go to a men's house yeah boa peri ba at that time you went with your bags exactly was all back on how are you raped when you came to my house was all back with those lady pizza jack how where did you expect to sleep because you know it's a rented room i don't know so about the room you kept it and you fought it and you you sort of accepted i guess your situation I, and I, you end up yes. not even seeing it as rape uh-uh. you know mm. yes and now this this one let me into being very very broken very extremely extremely broken to a point where now i had to disassociate myself from humanity it started there because i felt like each time give a close lebat i end up being a victim and nothing gets done about it the first time it happened nothing was done about it. that's why i said consciously i was a virgin not physically consciously because i hadn't consented exactly. to anything yeah. prior to say it, it it was an accident but this time when that happened i was a conscious virgin 
and it meant I hadn't decided to do anything. But still, that consciousness, that innocence, yaore, I hadn't decided to do something, was still taken away, and that was very unfair. So I don't know how much time I'm left with, but I would have loved to at least uh, uh, delve into the one thing that really broke me the most out of all things, because it's a long journey. Like mm. every year, like I just told you, like even yesterday, something of that nature happened. Yeah, it's a long story, uh, but the one that I just want to talk to, just to try and encourage women that have uh, or are going through this situation, Jebi Aukaba, Nangwana Obutloko, Nangwana is something that is is an eternal wound. You cannot compare wound Yangwana to any other wound Yabo So it, it was when my 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 daughter had a son and I fought so much for that boy to be born because I understood my daughter was just 17 and chances were she thought of other things. I'm not ready, my mom the society ring, the family ring. And I fought for that boy to be born because I brought him, I brought them with me to Jova because I was working here at the time. Mm. And the boy was born, I was so happy. It was beautiful, handsome boy. What uh, we didn't know was the the battle he was going through. Because first they said he was detected with jaundice. And in, he, he was hospitalized and came back. Then he became lethargic. He would just sleep. His boy would just sleep and he would just be rolling eyes like that. Handsome, bubbly and all that. But because Wano Morepaka, this blanket, fleece most of the time, mm. fluffy. You're not able to tell most of the time, Hori, body area shrink. Then, but he was always us. Like, I, I would really worry, Mama, because my mom was with us at the estate helping my daughter to take care of the boy when I'm at work. Mutli, she just switched basically. But, Mama, this boy, uh, he's always sleeping. Mama, Rai, what's up? We don't know. So, it happens that it was Good Friday, like Easter time. Mm. We have to go home. When we get home, the father of the baby boy came to see the boy. But Adulile, nobody was able to see Kadineb to say, the head circumference is increased. And Kanako, we hadn't picked it up. The one thing we picked it up was the lethargy, but we still didn't know it was, he was being lethargic. We thought it was just the baby being a baby, sleeping at all. Mm. Then this thing, yeah, I think it was bronchitis, started. He started gasping out for air. And we took him to the hospital. It was a, a, a public hospital because I didn't have medical aid for him at the time. No, even for myself. Mm. So, no, we were just brought up, brought up in a way, if you have medical aid, it means you are expecting a sickness, so you're attracting it. So it means my mom never had medical aid. Medical aid was not our thing, honestly. So now we take the boy to the hospital, the public hospital. When we get there, the doctor checks the boy and the doctor says, we suspect this is hydrocephalus. I don't know what hydrocephalus is. I've never seen it. I don't know. Well, I've seen it, but I didn't know what it was called. Like, what? And I, obviously, you know, you'll go into the internet. First, Google, Google the term. Mm. Uh, what came out of there? You know, this sickness where the, the head just... Keeps growing. Yeah, I'm mean, into the size of two, three watermelons. And my daughter was the one that actually broke the news and said, Mama, they say they suspect... Hydrocephalus, and I looked it up. I was like, Mutim, after everything I've been through with my kids, then you still chose it to be me because they say one in hundred thousand bats, but you chose it to be me. Really, what for? Why me? I'm a single mother, and I'm supposed to be classified under broken women. I refuse that term. I'm a conqueror. A lot of things that happened to me happened to me for me to empower others and speak to others and mm. heal and all of that. Mm. But this one now is going to because I have to be strong for myself and for my child. I see myself, for me, 
but my daughter, her, yeah. my daughter is a vulnerable spirit. And she was young as well. She was young as well. Mm-hmm. How is she going to continue with life knowing what special needs? And she's 18, she's right? She's 17. At the time, 17, okay. Like, I said, questioning God, like, Mudimu, really? Do we, did we need that as a family? Well, where is God, mm-hmm. when is he going to respond to you and say no or oh, yes? And I remember, break, I, I broke down a lot that year. I was always crying. Mm. Not crying for the boy. I knew God would come through for us. But my daughter, because the week we found out, it was the week I was going to go to school. First time I fell because the boy was born in Feb. Now we detect this Buluichika match. She's supposed, the school had agreed to go to school. Now she's supposed to stay in hospital. The condition of the hospital was horrible. The, the way they were doing things, you know how public hospitals are. The head circumference was growing every day. I get a centimeter. You go today, she's like this. He's like this. Tomorrow you go, he's like that. And now automobile. So that's progressing like very like fast. Rapidly. And I, I I couldn't it was hard. If that's why I jumped everything to this particular one. Yes. And now the worst thing was that Naibalidi, what do you call this? Uh, it's like Obali. Defeats Nafida at night, and my daughter will call and say, "Mama, the bed is shaking. I don't know what to do." I call the nurse. My my son is yo. Oh, it was horrible, and we continued with that journey, praying. I had to now resign because I haven't Nike so did medical aid all these years. I was working with this company, so you can suddenly want a medical aid and expect an immediate cover. I had to resign and go into another province, which is Limpopo, uh, get a job. As in the same uh, category mm-hmm. as a branch manager for this insurance company. And now at least I was given an opportunity to give a medical aid and they would cover him immediately. But it took time because he didn't have a birth certificate. He just came out of hospital, went back because of Jundis, and now he he's ad- ad- admitted again. The next time I went to see him, really, th- that condition is, is cruel. The eyes were sunken now. And the head really looked like a watermelon or a pumpkin. He was looking very ugly, unacceptable. Mm. And I thought of my daughter, Kirmudimu. Now my daughter must look at her son like this every day. I remember my son, my daughter saying, Mama, do not buy him the clothes because they won't fit him. Imagine that statement. Munya kele dia porchete nang through the body like your your jumpsuits. What you wanna check? It won't fit. I I underlined those with us like, really? Because I knew one man in our village, town village, that had a huge head. And when you check, chances of this thing getting ill, they're very slim. It needs neurologists. They must insert a shunt into the brain. It's a process. So I, so so where is he now? Um, what is his progress? Um. After that, how is he doing now? He's, 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 the, 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 the head circumference stopped growing. They put in the first shunt, it failed. They put in the second shunt, it went well. There were complications, a lot of complications. He had to vomit his own poop because there was constriction in the stomach. Mm-hmm. And he had many, many, many surgeries. So it took time because most of the time he was now hospitalized. So all those milestones, like sitting... Crawling mm, took longer. Took longer. Even mm. now, when he sits, he still bends like that. But what I thank God for is that the, the circumference had to not only uh, stop but also reduce oh, because the water, Lord. the water was drained out, and uh, there was now a pack on the stomach. Yes, but it it, it was a very daunting mm. journey, and what broke me the most, what crushed me the most was seeing all those other girls in that hospital, in that ward, that had no medical insurance, that they had to wait for government. Because now they only take you more serious when the situation is worse. Yeah, it must be an emergency. Yes. Mm -hmm. And most of the girls that, it was not women my age, it was girls. So I asked myself, where is this thing coming from? Mm -hmm. One in 100,000 beds. And today it is just so common. Mm. How possible? How I, how did we get to this? So my daughter was saved by God's grace through also those doctors and thanks to them that they worked on the boy and he's back home with my mom. Yeah, he's getting, so he's getting, he's getting there. 
the, the his right treatment talkative like the grandmother <laughs> talks a lot <laughs> though you don't get to hear what he's saying mm. but it'd be like blah, 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 sure. amen everything amen i think yeah. he gets it in the church during the testimonies yeah yeah Amen. so i'm um, so glad yeah you shared that and also yeah. and, and and the daughter is back in school oh yeah he is doing matric next year she's okay now that's um, awesome. because she used to be very depressed granny. <laughs> Oh I love goodness. I love that and yeah. I think maybe you had a very strong influence in her making that decision to progress with her education and mm. to really just focus on that because you jumped in mm. and stepped in um to be a mother who be that shoulder to cry on to be that grandmother who's involved invested and committing to make sure that her life really improves so well done thank you so much for that. that well done and sure. I think it's because of the things I've been through in yes. the past yes. because even Nena he she managed to find purpose in that storm mm. she said I want to be a neurologist just and she started looking out for things that would help her progress into that lane wow. before she didn't know who she wanted to become or mm. and even the bias scholar she was not but after that incident she managed to find definition of who she, who she is mm. or who she could become and what she wants to be and what she wants to be and, and she fight for that wants to change the lives of oh, people, people because of her mm. own experience mm. that is powerful so inspiring mm. thank mm. you so much mm. Asli Taro. oh so my much. goodness Yo. what a story i know you also writing a book you're in the yes. process of writing a book yes. uh because you literally only shared a drop in the ocean <laughs> of your story <laughs> she has been through it so much. and um i like the fact that you've started the process of basically just putting pen on paper mm. um and then when the book is available please do let us know but thank you for sharing your Most story definitely. thank you for being so strong thank mm, you for being amazing mm. you look beautiful i still can't believe you're a grandmama <laughs> because what a wow yeah. Yeah. gorgeous yeah. thank you so much yeah. thank you so much no linda i thank you so much um i, I can't believe linda I, i found myself on this very couch i've always wanted yeah. to be here You did not respond to that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad it finally happened. I am so glad it was meant to. It yeah. was meant to. Yeah. yeah. Show yeah. Her some love, guys. <laughs> okay. Show her some love in the comment section. She is finally here. Yeah. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, we look forward to reading all your comments, and we're looking forward to obviously buy that book when it's ready. We'll share more information from myself, Innocent, and myself, Melissa, to now awesome queen Lita for sharing her story. It It's is bye. 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 <laughs>